now we come on to the uh, second pillar the process so we were discussing the people thing now we are on to the process thing so basically process is spelling out the sop so for every type of incident we need to create a standard operating procedure so whatever happens there should be sop for that suppose uh, we we found a ransomware in a system so we we are just getting reported that uh, this system this user the system after you know booting up it is showing a ransomware message and it is wanting this amount of bitcoins to be delivered now what will we do so we are you know confused and some, uh, we don't know what to do so basically we need here to follow a standard operating procedure and you know we need to build these procedures prior to the incident occurring so all of the you know security incident that you know have occurred in the past we create a sop for that so we know what to do so sop might include uh, you know getting that system off the network and you know calling this and this and uh, you know investigating how you know what to do next so basically we need sop for that so it uh, tells out what steps are to be taken in the event of a alert or breach including how to escalate where to report and what will the breach response procedure so these for the business processes technology processes operation processes analytical processes mm -hmm. so basically we need a new uh, you know uh, desktop uh, or a new user so what all will the process be done so we need to you know implement our cybersecurity policy to that so we need a process for that so how do we connect to that system so we need to provide a new ip and also all these you know processes are you know detailed out then we have a, a analytical process suppose we need to analyze the security incident so what all needs to be done so we need to you know identify the iocs we need to the, do the forensics so all of these anal uh, analysis also that is also laid out in a sop so processes are very important they you know needs to be created before you know uh, we you know set up a sop so that we know what to do in an event of a security incident then we come on to the third pillar that is the technology so technology basically involves uh, these all devices the firewall ids ips anti spyware and all of these devices so i'll just go through some of them yeah so firewall is basically a end device so we you know allow some of the ips or we only allow some ports to be you know uh, allowed on our network layer so we need a firewall for that then we have a intrusion detection system intrusion prevention system so as the name suggests so any intrusion if it has occurred so ids detects that and there is a ips so it prevents any you know unauthorized user from entering the uh, in uh, or the network so this is the ids and ips then uh, we have a anti spyware so basically anti virus so for an organization we have uh, you know anti virus servers so they keep pushing the updates to the all the end devices so that is anti spyware then there is a rogue host detection so rogue host detection basically is a you know software that periodically scans the routers and the subnet to detect uh, to detect any new you know system or a device that is found connected to the network now suppose there is a, a bank suppose we take an example of sbi so there is a branch of sbi now they have a branch server in that now they have 15 to 16 15 let's say we have they have 15 desktop machines connected to the branch server now suppose one user connects his mobile phone which which might be affected infected with a malware to his desktop unknowingly he connects it now this rogue host detection so this task is basically to detect any new device you know peripheral or any connected to the network so it should you know detect and you know uh, trigger an alert okay this new device was detected and created so this is a rogue host detection then there is a policy auditor 
so it is an it assessment solution that you know uh, automate the process for internal and external it security audits so this is a it security audit kind of a software then asset management is basically how many desktop and computers or other you know network devices are there so all these assets you know uh, they should be managed properly we should know uh, where are the players in the network what's their ip what's their you know mac address so this asset management is a you know task uh, done by the uh, usually by the soc so then there is a remote forensics suppose a cyber security or uh, incident occur at a remote level or maybe uh, at a at a place where soc people you know is not there suppose ongc uh, has a lot of remote sites or some offices so its soc is not you know, it is at a center place now there is an uh, you know uh, incident that has occurred so the analyst might want to take a you know uh, you know remote to that system to analyze what happened so remote forensics is also part of soc then there is application wide listing so basically we want some new application that is created uh, that will be you know used at a, at some location so we need to whitelist that ip or application to be you know allowed on that network then there is patch management so patch management is basically new uh, patches are you know um, uh, provided by these uh, security you know tools uh, tools organization so both some firewall cisco firewall some vulnerability not not for firewall some application server or some databases new you know vulnerabilities are found and patches are there so uh, regular updates and patches needs to be implemented so patch management is a thing then baseline monitoring so baseline monitoring is basically uh, there is a network of an organization suppose uh, uh, let's take an example of uh, suppose ircctc or or a request maybe railway organization so they you know analyze the 24 hour net flow for them so we know that at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock the there is a tatkal booking thing now at that time the net flow or the you know uh, flow of the uh, for the server increases drastically so basically we create a you know baseline for them so we have historical data with us so we need to you know formulate okay this is the normal thing so we need to create baselines okay on a daily basis average 800 or 1 gbps 800 mbps or 1 gbps data is there so if we suddenly find that okay network load is basically 10 gbps now this is a you know this should uh, alert, uh, trigger an alert so we need baseline to you know uh, monitor these type of activities then we have data loss prevention dlp so basically uh, all of the Uh, organizations uh, critical data so that data loss should not happen so we have dlp solutions we have a lot of dlp you know solution providers available in the market so they basically you know uh, stop organization data from being you know leaked so they get installed on a on the desktop or the you know uh, mobile device so for controlling the data loss then we have a sim same we will be covering in this slide later then we have flow monitoring we have packet capture we have a next gen firewall so web application firewall web proxy so proxy server we all know then we have a honeypot honeypot is a device you know that uh, mimics some uh, 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 a network device in an organization but it is you know intentionally kept vulnerable so it uh, you know uh, uh, gives a attacker uh, you know an indication okay you can you know attack me so basically honeypot detects new types of attacks that attacker do so we have security we have devices that are you know well up to date but this honeypot device that is intentionally kept unupdated and vulnerable so that the attacker exploits it so we need to you know uh, we need we get a lot of threat intelligence from these honeypot devices so time is running out i'll be you know covering in a fast way so all of these devices i have you know covered so sim i'll i'll just take through 2 3 minutes for sim 
So same is the security information and event management. So we have all the security devices like firewalls, servers, routers, switches, IDS, IPS, vulnerability scanners, content detonation. So antivirus, critical application. So all of these devices generate logs on a daily basis. On a regular basis and every time they are generating logs. So all of these logs, they are put inside a SIM. Okay. SIM is basically security information and event management. So it analyzes these logs. It has part of a correlation inbuilt in it. So it correlates, so suppose a new, uh, as I earlier also gave an example, that some uh, new attacker is, you know, trying to scan. So firewall detects, okay this IP has scanned our network 100 times in a minute or 100 times in an hour, suppose. Now that IP is also trying to, you know, intrude. So ideas also detects it. So this correlation is done by a SIM. So SIM is basically not a centralized log collection, but it, log collection is one part of it. It has a whole lot of activities, you know, inside it. Basically correlation is done in a SIM. So log enrichment is there. There is a ticket or case management is there and integration of all the IOCs, you know, from cyber threat intelligence. Base. So we have a lot of threat intel feeds coming in. So from security vendors, so we, you know, can automate these, you know, feeds to be directly connected to the SIM. Okay. So this is a SIM. So that is the heart of a swap basically. Now I'll give an example of one SIM rule how you know it is uh, you know configured and created suppose i'll cover the second uh, one so there is a trigger that 15 or more uh, firewall drop deny events occur from a single ip address in one minute then this is an early warning for a scan or a worm propagation okay so this firewall and outer we create these sources for these logs and if there is a trigger, then we need to, you know, drop that IP. So this is a basic simple, uh, you know, SIM rule. So uh, we have, you know, a lot of, you know, hundreds of rules created in a SIM that depends upon the organization to organization. Suppose uh, a large organization will keep this value as maybe 150 and a smaller one will keep five. So baselining needs to be done at how many, you know, organization is susceptible on a, you know, it depends upon the organization, the size and all. Okay. So there is one also example I'll cover. So when a alert, when a single host sees an identified piece of a malware. So basically an antivirus server will detect this. Okay. Now this is a trigger. Now, if this is triggered, then uh, our goal of a you know, is achieved that alert when a virus or a spyware is detected on a host. So basically these types of rules that are created in a SIM. Okay. Then there is a new tool called as a source So security orchestration, automation and response. So it basically automates the, you know, L1 activities, L1 anal analyst activities. So basically if we find a, you know, IP continuously scanning, we need to block it. So earlier it is, you know, being used by a manual process. Suppose uh, a security alert is generated in a SIM, the analyst analyzes it and analyst then, uh, you know, uh, submits to the yellow team or the SOC admins, uh, systems admins. Okay, you need to block that IP. Now, SOAR tool allows it to automate this thing. If an IP, it is scanning, you block it at the firewall. So this complete orchestration, you know, is possible through this SOAR tool. But here the point is that, you know, we need a lot of soft maturity for it. And also we need to, you know, remove the false positives before we are able to do this kind of thing. So we have, you know, very high analyst productivity. He's not, you know, busy in mundane tasks. We have faster response times. So this is a SOAR tool. Then uh, there is a national or state SOC concept. So basically, NCCC is the national SOC. So we have sectoral SOCs also. We have organization SOCs. We have state SOC. Now this is a AP SOC that was established in 2018. 
So it works on the lines of ICERT, Indian Computer Emergency Response Team. So it covers all the you know government departments and state-owned entities for the AP on the Pradesh. So this is a state SOC. We have a various states. We have their own SOC. Then we have a national SOC also. So this is basically the security operation center.